What's going on guys? So I actually have been starting to slowly prep for residency and that means understanding what you know program directors care about and I actually came across a really important PDF and I wanted to share some of the things that I found in there with you guys. So let's do it. All right, what's up everyone? My name is Prerak. I love making videos about medicine and productivity. And today we are gonna talk about what matters for residency. And ultimately the source of this video is actually this PDF, which is the result of a program director survey. Program directors are the people who are in charge of residency and ultimately uh, play a big role in deciding who gets admitted and who does not. And in this survey, they actually asked program directors what they cared about when um, looking over applicants' uh, applications. And ultimately, when I found this, I thought it was really educational for me, and I wanted to publish this YouTube video to increase transparency. Uh, by no means am I a program director. I actually haven't even gotten into residency yet. <laughs> Fingers crossed that I do. But I thought that this was super helpful, and I know that the goal of my channel was always to educate and increase educational accessibility. So I figured I would share this with all of you in the hopes that it helps. So with that being said, let's now get into uh, the findings of this survey. So you'll see that this is the main PDF that I'm going to go off of. Uh, again, this is publicly, of publicly available information, so you can definitely access this on your own. But what you'll see is this is uh, 650 program directors that were surveyed. And ultimately, the things that they were surveyed on was on the left side. And then you can see that the number of people that cited that level of importance is uh, in the second column. And the third column is the rating that they gave in terms of importance out of five. The thing that I want to point out here is underlined in red. These are factors that program directors said mattered when they selected applicants to interview, right? So there's two things. The first decision that a program director would have to make is to decide who to interview. After you interview everyone, you then have to decide um, who actually gets matched to your program. So this is in that first section that I just mentioned, which is deciding who to interview. So with that being said, I want to just go through a few facets of this because I do think there's some interesting things here that we should remember. The first thing that stood out to me is the fact that I think as med students we're so used to thinking step one matters and step two matters which are the main board exams for medical school. However the thing that stood out to me right away was I saw step one and step two mattered right so you can see step one score matters and step two score matters but up there right next to them are actually letters, letters of recommendation, as well as your MSPE, which is essentially written by the dean of your medical school who's in charge of students. Um, and it surprised me because you usually think step one and step two matter more, but you never hear about the letters. And this is actually reassuring to me because it means that there's so much more to your application than just your numbers. You need to have people that can vouch for you. And more often than not, that app often matters just as much, if not more, than your step one and step two scores. So with that being said, definitely make sure you're making good mentors in medical school. Make sure you have people that can vouch for you, both in terms of the academic professional standpoint, but also you'll see that another thing that's also very important is actually your overall like perceived maturity and professionalism and ethics. So if you have letters that can mention that you are professional and ethical and, and speak to your capabilities, all of that synergistically can actually help your application quite a bit if not more than just the numerical scores that you have. Another thing that stood out to me is that grades matter, but not as much. So I think, again, most medical schools now are actually pass-fail, and the only thing that's usually graded is your clerkship clinical rotations. But notice that those grades are mattering to about 69% of people uh, of the program directors that were surveyed, as well as 62% here. And specifically, it's the grades in your clerkship year that matter, and particularly uh, the grade in the clerkships of your desired specialty. So for example, if you're going into surgery, they would wanna see that you did well in your surgery clerkship. Uh, if you're going into internal medicine, they wanna see that you did well in your internal medicine clerkship. Again, those grades matter, but relative to step one and step two, it seems like they don't matter as much. So this is again, one of those things that's slightly different in medical school compared to, um, I think, the transition from high uh, college to medical school, where grades matter as well as your MCAT. It almost seems like grade matter a little bit less uh, and definitely not as much as standardized tests. Moving forward, another thing that stood out, obviously, is that step one matters and step two also matters. This is something that will change, but again, this is the 2020 survey. So step one is still numerical out of 300, and step two is also still numerical score out of 300. Both of them matter, right? They actually matter just about the equal amount. 
everyone who surveyed it on average gave a rating four out of five and four out of five for both. It's just that 90% of program directors said that step one matters and only 78% said that step two matters. And this is going to, again, change because step one is going to pass fail. So I, pres I presume it's going to go down this list. It won't matter as much. You definitely would want to pass it, right? Because you'll see that passing step two is very important, just like passing step one will be. But step two will probably move up in importance after the pass fail change gets implemented. But note that step one and step two matter almost equally in terms of like the rating out of five. So just remember that when you're taking both tests, I think the reason step two doesn't matter as much is because you have step one. Uh, most med students often would not take step two until they actually apply to residency. So most program directors may not even have the step two score by the time they decide to interview and therefore it may not be as important for them. That's just my hypothesis. Um, and a couple more things, two more things I want to point out here. There are big red flags here. Uh, and so this is another thing that I think is very underrated for medical school. Uh, I think it's very easy to go through medical school and think you have to do really well in uh, like, you know, step one, you have to do really well in step two, you have to re have really good grades. But the other thing is, you also don't want to have many red flags on your application. And what that means is actually failing the USMLE, not just like, passing it because um, getting a really good score on the USMLE is entirely different from um, failing it. Failing it means you got below a 203, I believe, in step one and below like 200 something in step two CK. If you fail any USMLE, it is a huge red flag because failing, I think, is between the 10th to 20th percentile score. So failing any exam is actually a big red flag because it signals, okay, what happened here? It's not necessarily a complete, you know, like you don't get an interview at all. But it is something that's going to raise questions. So that's just something that also stood out to me here is that you should try your best to not fail any exam. But if it were to happen, you definitely want to make a point that you acknowledge it and know that this clearly matters to a lot of program directors and you'll need to make sure you speak to it, right? Uh, that definitely stood out to me because I was like, oh my God, you know, like you definitely do not want to fail it because that's definitely something that a lot of program directors notice and they give it an importance of 4.5 out of 5 as well as, you know, same thing with failing at the USMLE Step 2 CS, which is a clinical skills exam. If you were to fail it, it is, it is a red flag and, you know, it's a 4 out of 5 importance as well as any failure in the complex uh, for DL students, also a 4.4 out of 5, right? Those are red flags and clearly matter a lot to program directors. It's not to say it's a complete deal breaker because I know things happen and I'm sure like any human being will be more than willing to understand what happened. But uh, I just think that it's important to recognize that this is something that will stand out. So you will want to make a point to address it if it were to happen to you. And last but not least, another thing that stood out to me on this list is that um, in my last video, I talked to you about the AOA. So the AOA does seem to matter for program directors, but again, not as much as you would think, right? 3.7 out of 5 and only 52% uh, of program directors even, you know, cited it as something that they look at. Um, another thing that I also like stood out to me is I think the intangible aspects matter a lot to a lot of program directors. And it's really tough to gauge these intangibles over like a paper application, right? Because remember, this is just determining based on who should we interview based on looking at their application. But if you could find ways to show you're a professional, to show that you're a genuine human being, it seems like program directors do care a lot about that. You'll see that evidence of professionalism and ethics is big, leadership qualities is big. So if you can find ways to show that, I'm, I'm pretty damn positive based on my experience with physicians as well as people who are in leadership roles, they care a lot about that. They may actually be willing to overlook um, you know, glimpses in grades, if you can show that you're mature, you can connect with patients. And honestly, that means a lot to me because a lot of the closest mentors I've had, I've respected not because, you know, this, they're the smartest, but just because they have this ability to connect with patients. And it seems like the residency program directors are well aware of that. And, and you can see it in terms of the intangible aspects that they care about. Uh, and I think we always get this question about prestige, just the prestige of your medical school matter. Well, the cool part is they actually did ask program directors that it seems like about 46% um, of, of program directors did mention that they look at if the person is a graduate of a highly regarded program, such as, you know, obviously Harvard and any Ivy League institution or, or w very well-known program stands out. But again, it's a 3.6 out of 5. It's not nearly as important as a lot of these other things we discussed, such as leadership characteristics, but nevertheless important to recognize that it is something that some program directors cite. If you guys enjoyed this video, let me know because this was the last thing I wanted to share. There's a couple more diagrams in here that I found very useful. So if you found this useful, I'll make another video, part two, about other things that program directors care about. 
and we'll go from there. So if you found this useful, like, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.